Thanks for tuning in to our bonus episode preview. This is just a short sample of this week's exclusive Patreon episode. You can hear the episode in its entirety by becoming a member at patreon.com slash indoctrination, where you'll gain access to all of our exclusive episodes and merchandise. It is so nice to have Andrew Pledger back on the show, the social media director extraordinaire of the podcast and an all-around good person. I know that you want to come on and talk about some new things and new developments, new things that have been explored by you. And so I can't wait to get into that whole discussion. If you can spend a couple moments just introducing yourself again, that would be great. Of course. Yeah, I'm so excited for this and I'm glad we could work this out. But for people who do not know me, my name is Andrew Pledger and I was raised in the independent fundamental Baptist movement, a very strict movement with a strict code of conduct, heavy emphasis on hell and end time prophecies. And they claimed that the KJV Bible was the absolute truth and the only word of God. So a very culty movement. And I was homeschooled my entire life for the purpose of indoctrination by my mother. And it was interesting because my parents, they also grew up in the IFB and they were convinced it was the truth and they wanted to indoctrinate me and my brothers. And growing up in that very isolated and high control environment, I then realized very late on, which is understandable in that kind of environment when you don't have any kind of sex education at all. But I realized that I was gay and being that in that environment was seen as an abomination. You were compared to murderers, you were compared to pedophiles. So it was one of the worst things that you could be in that environment. And it caused a lot of religious trauma from that. And when I graduated from homeschooling, the control was not going to stop there. My parents would only help me go to a fundamentalist Christian college. And the one that I ended up going to was Bob Jones University. And this is really what I want to talk about today. The experiences I had at that university, I was there for three and a half years and I was expelled my senior year for publicly telling my story of growing up in the IFB, uh, denouncing its teachings, and then coming out of the closet. So all these different things that was seen as a threat to that system of control. I was going against authority. I was going against the flow. I was not conforming and being silent anymore. And Bob Jones University did not like that. And so I was expelled my very last semester of my senior year. <laughs> I laugh about it now, but it's not, it wasn't funny when it happened. <laughs> I'm sure it was not hilarious at the time. And yes, I'm excited to announce that I recently just finished my bachelor's degree. I transferred. So there you go, Bob Jones. I finished. <laughs> <laughs> right. The big part is I recently announced I'm doing a limited podcast on Bob Jones University. It's called Surviving Bob Jones University, a Christian cult. And it digs into the history of Bob Jones, the psychology of fundamentalism, the criteria for cults, which I'm excited to have you come on the podcast, Rachel, to share your expertise. And I'll also be interviewing survivors from various backgrounds. Mm, it's really great. And I'm really glad that you've put that together. I'm curious about the idea for that and how that came together. Because, you know, I think when you're raised the way you're raised, there is real fear that's instilled in you about being out about anything, about anything that's different or that's in opposition, about being gay, you know, kind of gay in public, whatever that means, but just being out. And then I think also just about saying, this is not how I feel. This is not what I believe. And this is why I can't believe this anymore. And this is why I think this is wrong. And being able to put 
a show together. I mean, I just think about the having your hand slapped in such a major way by being expelled right before you had a chance to finish up and graduate, you know, to come back from that and to have the courage to say, okay, no, 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 no. I already, I know about myself that I have this impetus to share, to share the truth as I see it and as other people might see it, even though I had my hand slapped, even though I had to come back from that moment on my own and find a way to finish up in my own time, which is hard to do when people have to take a break from school, just getting back into the mode of school. Once you've been working, it's a very hard thing to do, but not impossible, just hard. And so here you are doing this limited series. Do you find that there is any residual fear that like conditioned fear that comes up in you? Yeah, I think the only fears that I have about making it, I think, has been the backlash from people from Greenville and for those still affiliated, which I have seen online. And I've been working, I've been working with a therapist for a year and a half now, working through my trauma from uh, my religious background in general. And working on this series is going to, I know it's, it is already, it's a healing experience for me. And I think it will be for other survivors, but one of the hardest things as I've been working on this series is listening to old sermons to integrate into the podcast, just that language and like the fear that comes up in my body from that. And I think the other fear that I have is possibly being sued for doing it. I don't think it will happen, honestly, just because Bob Jones University, they don't have the money to do it and they've never been the one to sue people who publicly come out and share their stories. But I think they're still kind of, so I I am being careful with like, I'm having all my guests sign a form. (laughs) I'm trying to protect myself in any way that I can for this. And the other fears, I guess, that I have is that, I I think it's still like that people pleaser that's still deep down (laughs) inside of me, which is something I had to like greatly overcome to even like tell my story in the first place. But I think there's still remnants of it inside of me because I know that there are people that are loving that I'm making the podcast and there are people that are really, really angry. And I know there are people who hate me (laughs) at what I'm doing. (laughs) 